Hello, I call this video build part four, even though it's not really a build because the build is done here, but uh, it's sort of continuing along from the last few videos, so I thought I'd put it in the same series, so to speak. Um, and all I've done really is I'm trying, uh, I've got a new Mobius, this is the one with the C-type lens, so I've been trying out that, and I'm also trying to get some stable footage, particularly from when the, the quad is in a GPS hold because eventually I want to try making a follow me kind of situation with this so the stablest the stabler I can get the footage without the follow me then um, the better it should be after I get that running theoretically um, so I haven't really changed a whole lot uh, the biggest change is that I now have an OSD on here um, I'm using the KV OSD for that it works quite nicely fairly simple to set up had a few problems with the GPS or something, which I'll discuss a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> but I took out these posts here from this position on both sides, and I found that if I took this camera out as well and used this little tiny one for FPV, it works just as well. Um, I could actually put the Mobius completely inside here and put the little FPV camera at the top up there, and it fits in there quite nicely, but I just couldn't get rid of the jello in that situation even though I did I tried packing it in with some of this like neoprene kind of squishy foam and stuff it just still had jello in the video so I went back to putting the Mobius on the damping ball plate here at the top which was pretty good I haven't really seen much jello at all from this and as you can see I've been using my favorite um, foam block to make a little around about 30 degree or so, <coughs> or so <coughs> mounting um, to point that downwards <coughs> <coughs> ah, excuse me um, so that's about all I've changed but uh, as you can see after that I went back to the um, the normal FPV camera just to you know might as well um, the OSD as I say was giving a little bit of interference um, I was flying this earlier and strangely when I first got to the flying area it seemed to be the GPS was working perfectly fine as you can see in this little bit of footage that I recorded from the DVR you can see we're actually getting like 10 or 11 satellites at some points in this video um, but it, what the GPS hold was not working and the compass seems to be fine GPS seems to be fine but GPS hold functionality was not working it would just sort of swerve away um, and just keep going off into the distance as if it was going to return to home somewhere else anyway so I gave up on that for a while but when I came back to it I found that if I just unplugged my OSD and the FPV transmitter the um, well after that I, I noticed that the GPS was then reading zero satellites until I unplugged my FPV transmitter and the OSD which are powered at the same by the same plug um, and I'd had the FPV transmitter running with the GPS just fine earlier like a few days earlier so I'm suspecting that maybe something to do with this OSD might be giving me trouble there I'm not really sure need to do a little bit more um, checks with that by the way you can see the the DVR the cheap and nasty DVR that I'm using uh, it doesn't record the full screen properly which is kind of annoying uh, on the far right hand side you can see that the um, the GPS and the, the last little bit of the OSD display has been cut off there. Um, another thing that I had problems with was I'd never quite got it stable on 6 inch props even to this day it's still not very stable on 6 inch props for some reason but I found that I was getting a lot of sort of diagonal wobbling like this to the point where I just couldn't fly it um, sometimes and it started when I first connected my FPV transmitter up to the power and what I did for that was I just spliced it directly into the main um, wiring harness there by the way I had a good idea for how to keep the wire from cutting itself on the carbon fiber because the front edge of the carbon fiber is kinda of sharp there it's got a sharp little edge on it and at the back it's exactly the same and I didn't want this wire to be you know rubbing on that and cutting into it because as we know now that the carbon fiber is conductive and you don't want these two wires to be 
connecting to each other. So I just got a, a piece of uh, larger silicon wire and I cut the silicon shielding off it and I zip tied it across that little it's kind of hard to see isn't it but maybe you can see there I've zip tied the silicon wire I pulled the wire out of it of course so it's just the wire shielding and I've zip tied that around the little tab that was on the end of the carbon fiber plate so that now these two wires are not rubbing on any carbon fiber they're just rubbing on another piece of silicon wire underneath and the bumpy bits of the zip ties being here also mean that the wire is not going to go too much to the side. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, uh, so I was having problems with the quad going like that a lot and I <laughs> I tried it at home one time in my room and I, I noticed this funny smell like the burning smell that I smelt just before the smoke started pouring out of uh, last time. So I investigated and to make a long story short, I found that the two clockwise motors here seem to be made in a way that's not very ideal because underneath the motor where you screw in the screw, one of the screw holes is directly above where these wires are coming in from the side. So I, what I was doing was screwing a screw into one of those wires and of course connecting it to the frame which is connected to everything else. So you didn't notice anything while it was just sitting here on the bench, but as soon as you put some power through it and spin the motors, positive voltage would come through to the frame. So the frame was becoming positive voltage. And that was okay until I then connected my um, FPV together onto this harness, because then, then what happens is the FPV unit is then grounded to this ground, the battery, and then by extension the antenna cable that comes out here and goes back around here and then is mounted onto the frame is also grounded so this would be ground and then the frame is becoming positive voltage from the motors uh, so that's where I was getting the burning smell from um, so to fix that all I needed to do was replace that one screw it was only one of those screw holes under there that was a problem, but you can see I've replaced the steel screw with a plastic one on that motor and also on the other counterclockwise motor. The clockwise motors did not seem to have a trouble with that. They, the wire underneath the um, the hole was not it was like it, well, there was no collision there, but um, that's just something to watch out for, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm going to play a bit of video that I got earlier today, um, and I just did a GPS hover, because this is mainly what I was trying to test, a GPS hold hover, and just to check how jello free and how movement free overall the video was, and I was quite impressed. And this camera too, I'll, I'll play some uh, footage that I got doing FPV after that. And you'll see that this camera, even though it was early in the day, the sun had only been up for about half an hour or an hour or so. Um, and even when the camera's facing straight into the sun, it doesn't glare out the whole video as much as the older Mobius did. So I'm not sure if that's to do with this upgraded lens type or the upgraded firmware that I put on it that's the, new, the newest version. But it definitely makes a nicer picture. And I also found that the latency for the video out was much better. So I would be okay with using this as an FPV camera now, as opposed to the older Mobius that I had. Um, but just to give you an idea of... Um, so this is my first attempt at a downward pointing camera. So the Mobius is inside the phone block here, pointing downwards at 45 degrees. This gave me huge jello, so it was immediately a no-go uh, and it was also very hard to land I basically had to catch it in my hand using the block of foam to grab it because even though it stands up like this to take off uh, it's impossible to land without tipping over like that so that was a bit of a silly idea um, but yeah so this is the difference in size um, 
between the old Mobius, which I'm calling A, the A lens type, so that's this one and that one, and the C type, which is the new one. Um, and one thing that I was looking forward to trying with this new Mobius was doing some 720p 60 frames per second recording because I really like the way the 60 frames per second videos look. It it's just looks really alive and um, like it's really there on your screen. Uh, but of course as you can see it's a very very small field of view when you do that. So I was hoping that this slightly larger field of view would still be okay for um, FPV um, filming and stuff but it's just it's kinda too small still. But anyway you can see that I've been using a 2200 milliamp hour battery for most of this static GPS hover testing and that gets me 13 minutes, just on 13 minutes uh, just hovering with that so it's pretty pretty decent flight time and when I do FPV I'm using a 1300 milliamp hour 3 cell as well and that's getting me seven and a half minutes each time quite consistently so let's just have a look at some of the video that I got earlier Okay, this is a uh, GPS hold looking down 30 degrees or so, and you can see it's pretty stable. It has a little bit of shuddering that I just can't really seem to get rid of. Every quad I've built except for that G-Pass quad has had this little shuddering that I can't get rid of. I'm not sure if that's a tuning issue or what, but it's really annoying. So I tried um, processing this through a uh, Virtual Dub's D-Shaker filter, and that gives me a result like this, which is not too much different but it's nicer to watch isn't it Here's the same kind of thing from a bit higher up and this time I'm using the 720p 6, uh, 60 frames per second view. So you can see the field of view is much more narrow and it tends to, like, the shuddering is more noticeable here. Um, so when we turn the D-Shaker on though it's uh, still fine. So as you can see the 1080p footage is a lot more pleasant to view even though it's not 60 frames per second it's of course a lot sharper and more detail and the colors seem to be brighter as well um, and it's a bit of a, bit of a, a bummer that it's so um, barrel distorted but um, can't really be helped with that kind of a wide field of view. So for the rest of this video I'll just um, finish up with the uh, footage that I got from one of my FPV Flights and um, yeah, no, nothing amazing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.